Hello, this is John Buck again. Uh, we're going to work through another example of convolution, this time using something I call the ticker tape method. I've uh, gone ahead and drawn some of this up because it takes me a little time to get it set up the right way on my whiteboard with the, uh, the ticker tape pieces down here. But we're going to work through the same convolution example, but with a different, slightly different way of solving for it. So here's x of n, and the values are just 1, 2, and 3, starting at 0, 1, and 2. And then our impulse response, h of n, is 0 up until time 0, where it's 2, and then 1, and then 0, and then minus 2. <clears throat> and if you've seen the example of flipping and shifting, you realize you spend an awful lot of time drawing these lines and circles for different shifted versions of the signal, when all that really matters at the top are the numbers, as long as you keep everything lined up OK. So this leads me sometimes to use a technique I call the ticker tape method, where it's the same idea where we keep one of the signals the same way and the other one flipped, but we just represent both signals by their amplitude, a string of numbers that are their amplitudes. So, and, and so to do the convolution sum, which I guess I, I should have put down here to remind us, or maybe I'll put it up here to remind us. So again, we're just implementing this. This is another technique for evaluating this sum as k goes from minus infinity to plus infinity of x of k times h of n minus k. And to do that, we say, well, I'm just laying out the signals. So here's my x of k in the same order. So at, at time, here's my k index going from minus 4 up to plus 8, which is, is more than I actually need in this problem. And then the values of x are just 1, 2, and 3 at k equals 0, 1, and 2. So just to sort of highlight this for a moment, this term in the sum is represented by this row down here. And then the second row is the h values, but they've been flipped in time, right? So where this one went 2, 1, 0, minus 2, starting at time 0, it now goes, it reads that going backwards, so 2, 1, 0, minus 2. So right now, and, I, and I've added this little caret as my arrow, because this tells me what value of k I'm lined up with, which tells me what the output I'm computing is. So the arrow tells me right now, this would be, since this is lined up on 0, I would be computing y of 0. But again, just to sort of continue with the annotation part. So this part here is equal to h. So now to find the output for a given time, for example, right now at y0, I just multiply the second by the third row, the x row by the h row, and then keep a running total. So I'd have 0, 0, 0, 0. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 0, 0, 0, and 0 is the rest of the way out. So this tells me y of 0 would be 2. So let me just get those uh, quickly, take those blue lines off, and then we can, can move forward here and see how this works. So I'm going to start a new page that's sort of going to keep track of my values as I compute them. Let's go back to a white pen here. So we're going to start with y of 0, and we just saw that it's 2 times 1 and all the other terms are 0, so that's 2, and in fact maybe we'll draw it down here. So at 0 for negative time, here's y of n, here's my n-axis, and the first value is 2. Let's go back one and say, well now I have to use a little bit of my whiteboard magic, but again I would encourage you if you're doing this at home to do it on two pieces of paper. I can go down here and find my second piece of ticker tape and say, well if I want to find the output at time 1, I need this to be h of n minus, or 1 minus k, which we've seen already in the flip and shift video, is the same as flipping it, then delaying it by 1. So to do that, I shift the whole h string over by one sample, so that now my arrow, or my caret that indicates the time origin of the h, is lined up under the 1. So now if I do this, I can just again go through and multiply and add together. So I have 0 times 0 plus 0 plus 0. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 2 and then 0 is after that, so this adds to 5. So if I hop ahead to the next page, I get, oh, got to get my pen back, y of 1 is 1 times 1 plus 2 times 2, which is 5. So I draw that here, and time 1 I'll have 5, and I can just go back and repeat the same process. If I want to find the output when n equals 2, I need h of 2 minus k, so I need to, oh, I'm drawing on it, oops, sorry, clean that up, 
go back and get my uh, arrow to grab it. And now I can slide it over so the arrow lines up under 2. And again, go through and just do my vertical multiply add. So 0, 0, 0. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 2 times 3 is 6. So I've got 2 plus 6 is 8, and then 0 is from here on out. So if I do y of 2, again, I go back a page, I say I get 1 times 2 plus 2 times 3. And that's equal to 8, so it's gotten even taller here. And I'm just repeating the same process going over. The advantage, I think, of doing this compared to the flip and shift is there's a whole lot less drawing. Though, again, you could draw this on a second piece of paper and slide it underneath. But I think this is efficient and really boils it down to what the key things are, which is what are the amplitude of the signal at each time. So if we slide over by one more, we get the arrow is now lined up under the 3, so we're computing y of 3. I have minus 2 plus 0 plus 3, and then 0 is from 0 times 0 all the way, rest of the way out. So y of 3 will be minus 2 plus 3, which is 1. Continuing along, you can just grab the bottom piece of ticker tape and slide it over so that the arrow, whoops, the arrow is now lined up under the new output time, 4, and I get 0, minus 4, 0, 0, 0, so everything else is 0, so I just get the output at 4 is minus 4. Going back, I think we have one more value defined. So again, using my cursor, I can select my ticker tape and slide it over by another point. Right, and these are the, and this is also makes it clear this is the last non-zero output because these are the last ones that overlap. Everything after this, there won't be any overlap. So I get minus, I get three times minus two, and again the arrow is pointing up at f under the index of k is five. So this is minus six. Minus 6 at 5, and because they won't overlap, we know it's going to be 0 for all the rest of them. Right, and again, we can see that here if we go back. If we move over even one more spot, so we put the arrow, move this over so the arrow is under the 6. Everything that's non-zero here lines up under zeros here and vice versa. So there's all 0 times something, and I get zeros, and that'll just continue to be the case as I move to the right. So again, the ticker tape is not a different kind of convolution. It's just a different way to compute this sum. It's the same as the flip and shift, or shift approach, but it uh, sometimes is a little easier because you've just boiled the signals down to their amplitudes and you're not wasting a lot of time drawing lines and circles. So it maybe doesn't give you a picture of what's going on, but it does give you the key amplitudes that you can work through. Okay, so talk to you next time.